You are used to seeing Stanford Hoover Institution's Lonnie Chen on ABC 7 News as a political commentator. For the past year, he's been breaking down political headlines for us, but today he's making headlines of his own. Instead of commentator, he's becoming a candidate for California Controller. That's the chief financial officer of the state. And Lonnie Chen joins us now to discuss his change in direction and why he's doing it. Welcome, Lonnie. Good to see you. Thanks, Kristen. Good to be with you. All right, I'm scratching my head here, scratching my head, because you've been a frequent guest on our show and on many network programs talking politics, something, of course, you know well from your years of being a Republican strategist and advisor. So why are you giving up all of this, all of this, Lonnie? Uh, all of this. To, to run for office Great. yourself. That's right. Well, listen, I grew up in California. I have lived here on and off, you know, for the last several decades. And uh, I think there's just a lot of issues that our state has. It's a wonderful place. Uh, it's a place with great potential, but as I see the problems we face, you know, there's, I want to do something about them. And I feel like this is the best way for me to contribute to the public conversation about these issues. Now, this is a, a technical office. I think a lot of people may be wondering, what does the controller do? Why does it even matter to my life? Um, I look forward to answering those questions. I look forward to explaining why that is, because I think a lot of these issues we're facing now can be addressed if we have competent, strong, independent leadership. And that's something I think with my background, the time I've spent thinking about these issues I can provide. So uh, I'm making a transition It's gonna be very different from what I've been doing, I recognize that. But I think you know people want something new, they want a breath of fresh air and I hope I can provide that. It is a wonky position, which leads me to ask, is it also a stepping stone position? That is, do you see yourself going for a higher office after state controller, if that should work out? You know, I, I'm entirely focused on trying to win this race. I know how tough it's going to be to even to get this one across the finish line. You know, we have had essentially one party rule in Sacramento for the last 15 years. So for somebody with my background who comes admittedly from a different perspective than a lot of people up there, I think this is going to be a big enough challenge alone. I'm excited by this job. You know, someone said to me the other day, maybe you were dropped on your head as a kid because you really seem to get excited about things like audits and, you know, examinations of the books and trying to figure out how we're spending our money. And it's true. These are the things that excite me. And I think it's just one of those offices we don't pay a whole lot of attention to. But it has tremendous impact and tremendous influence on our lives as Californians. And if I can make things just a little bit better by going and doing this job, uh, I, I will consider it a, a very fulfilling experience and be more than happy to, to, to have done it. Well, Lonnie, you're starting to sound like a candidate already. That didn't take too long. <laughs> I, I will I will ask you this, though. Obviously, you are a Republican. Um, you have advised prominent Republicans like Mitt Romney, right, Marco Rubio. You worked in the George uh, W. Bush White House. Do you not see that as a liability? I mean, I know you do a little bit. We've talked about this. This is a very blue state, right? Um, so I ask you this when we talk about other candidates. What is your path to victory here? Well, I think the most important thing is I need to be able to share with people across the state what it is that I'd like to do, what my ideas are, some of the changes I think we should make, some of the ways in which we can improve some of these public programs that we have in our state. And these ideas are things that don't get talked about very much. So the, the first part of it for me in terms of the pathway, if you will, is just to share my vision and share my ideas. I'll just say more broadly, I do think the Republican Party has a lot of work to do in California. I don't think that's any surprise. I think what we have to figure out is how do we make the party, how do we make what we're trying to do in California and really focusing on California now, how do we make it more appealing to more Californians? How do we have a vision that's more inclusive, that's broader, that brings together people who are concerned about where our state is headed, but understand the way we do that is through accountability and transparency and independence in this particular office. That's what I'm gonna be focused like a laser on. I think it's really important to share that vision over and over again for people to hear it and for them to understand, look, here's somebody who might actually go and do something different than the people we typically send up there. I think it's going to be a message that will resonate with Republicans, with Democrats, with those who have no party preference across the political spectrum. All right. I mean, look, you know, we've talked about defining the Republican Party in California, whatever that means in the past. So I'm going to ask you here, right? Uh, I know that you have not made statements, notably in the past, um, tying yourself to former President Trump. Um, but which is the Republican wing that you sort of identify with that you kind of put yourself into right now? You know, I, I want to forge a new way forward for the party, Kristen. I, I know there's a temptation to say, look, is this guy like, is he, a, is he a Trump person? Is he a Romney person? Is he, you know, part of some other part of the party? 
this campaign for me is going to be defined by me and my vision for this office, for the Republican Party, whatever you want to call it. And I've worked for a lot of different politicians in my life. I've had a lot of different experiences in my life. I, I want to draw on something from all those people who I've worked with and learned from. And I think, again, that the Republican Party is better when it is a more inclusive, broader movement. So I am not one of these people who thinks that we should be a more narrow party, who believes that we should only allow certain kinds of people in who believe certain kinds of things. I want to see a broader movement. And the only way we're going to do that, look, Republicans are 24% registration in California. 24% is pretty low, all right? It doesn't get a whole lot lower than that. Mm -hmm. It suggests to me that if this party is going to be successful in the future, it has to have a vision. It has to have something broader than what it has now. That is what I'm about. I'm about forging my own pathway, and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see if that works. I, I saw you put on that commentator hat again there uh, for a moment there, Lonnie. I, I also want to ask you, look, you know, I don't know if this falls under the purview of the controller's office, because I know yeah. that is the chief fiscal watchdog, and, and part of that is looking for fraud and making sure the money is spent the way it's supposed to. But um, as you know, the EDD has been quite a disaster, right, during yeah. the pandemic, really not being responsive, the backlogs and then the fraud. Uh, is that something? you would have any influence over as controller? Oh, absolutely. This is actually one of the signature issues that so I think the next controller has to, ha has to deal with. Absolutely. Because one of the things you can do is not just identify the challenges, but say, listen, here are some solutions. Now, it's not up to the controller to implement them, but it is up to the controller to hold others accountable. So if we say we're going to improve the system by April of 2023, when that com time comes and we haven't improved the system, Believe me, the controller needs to be figuring out why that is and continuing to probe, continuing to figure out what are the ways that we can improve this system. This was the most preventable fraud, Kristen, in the history of our state. A lot of what happened this time around happened when we had the Great Recession 13 years ago. That's unacceptable. We should not have a problem that recurs over and over again. And then we're left scratching our heads. Why didn't we solve it? The controller needs to play a more active role, not just in identifying problems, but in helping people solve them. And most importantly, holding people accountable for the jobs they say they're going to do. All right. The election is November of next year, right? 2022. Uh, that is when yep. Betty Yee's term uh, will be termed out. Uh, Democrat. Uh, by the way, two Democrats have already announced that they are running as well, including former San Francisco Supervisor Malia Cohen, uh, Cohen, who we have invited to be on our show later this week as well. All right. Well, Lonnie Chen, Republican candidate for state controller. That is still so weird for me to say. I got to be honest. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, weird, it's weird for me to hear sometimes still, too, but I'm excited about it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for the conversation. See you soon. Thanks, Kristen. Take care. Thank you.